If you're rehearsing a Beethoven symphony with an orchestra, most of the players will have played the work before. And so, although there are problems, there are different problems from rehearsing and performing an unfamiliar work like the one we're working at today. Now, one of the main problems is that each of the players may not know what the general sound of the work is like. For instance, if your trombone sitting on one side of the orchestra, you may not know that your notes have got to fit in with that of a harp sitting on the other side of the orchestra, and indeed you may not be able to hear the harp playing. So one of the problems for the conductor is that he's got to impart to the orchestra some general idea of the balance. And as we rehearse today, you will probably see me looking rather thoughtful and looking at players who in turn are looking rather thoughtful. It's not that we're defeated by the work, it's just that we're trying to work out exactly how our sounds should match. You'll probably hear me use the word balance quite often. Now the big wave. that overwhelms the little ship and bears it up onto Fans Island where there is unhuman revelry unceasing between the ends of time. I knew you'd know all about that. Uh, no, that's, that's the bit where it says... <laughs> <laughs> that's the bit where it says gay but not hurried. The I often feel sorry after rehearsals that, that the public before. haven't been admitted yes. and uh, that uh, the players uh, themselves uh, hadn't got microphones pinned to their chest I give a little room because for it. all orchestras again, contain great wisecrackers and personalities uh, and like some of the do. things that lighten the emotional burden of rehearsals are never heard but you will probably see in this rehearsal that the Ulster Orchestra is full of such personalities and that it's impossible for a conductor to keep the smile off his face sometimes. <laughs> But then we hurry them. We go da da di da di da da di da da da. Absolutely in the tempo. Good. Uh, we can do poco più mosso. Can you find that after F, everybody? Or oh, incidentally, just before it, violas one, two, three, and four bars. Should they, they start mezzo forte and go away? Okay, the mezzo forte itself a little. Is it not? Yeah. Okay, a little more the mezzo forte, so that I can just hear it. So it, it then actually joins to your crescendo, all right. So the poco più mosso after F. Has everybody got that?
excellent. You see where we've just arrived. Get the molto diminuendo a little bit more um, started. Okay, we'll do before M, please. One, two, three, four, five bars. Singing clearly, it says up there. Five before M for mother. People always expect a conductor to emote all the time. Well, uh, I'm not really sure that it is very important that the emotional display of a conductor should reach an audience in performance, but certainly in rehearsal. If he emoted all the time, he'd wear his players out because players do respond to any emotional lead that you give them. This doesn't mean, however, that when a performance comes, in the sound, there won't be a great deal of emotion. This is put together in a slightly different way. Sometimes a very light-hearted rehearsal can lead to a very powerfully emotional performance.